As you can tell from the grill here, or if you've seen the recent Avengers movie, this is an Acura. Now, this is Acura's smallest SUV, the RDX, but for the 2013 model year, it's gotten bigger, just a little bit bigger. Acura made the grille less prominent on this car. The 2013 model, they made this more subtle. It used to be pointy, stick out. It was really noticeable. And you don't really see a bumper here either. Everything's molded neatly in place. It just kind of comes out from the side and goes smoothly across the front. Acura changed the styling on the quarter panel here. It used to be much more vertical. Now we have this nice contour in the side graphic. Now we come back here behind the car and where are the exhaust pipes? What happened to them? Well, they're actually hidden underneath here. It's a nice, subtle, premium element. But now let's go inside and check the tech. Now, as you can see from all these buttons on the steering wheel and on the center here, not much has changed with Acura with this technology. The maps are only in 2D, but they look good. And if you really scroll down, you can actually see the outlines of buildings in an area. And I like this interface too, it's not bad. We've got this big knob here and it's easy to zoom out or in. Now, as you can see, we've got the uh, Zagat listings. The Zagat listings are pretty detailed. You actually get the scores for the restaurant and you can even go deeper and get into actually comments about the restaurant. So you can really do a little digging here if you don't wanna pull out your phone and look up Yelp. Acura Honda has always had great voice command and here it's taken to a really good level so I've got an iPhone hooked up to the car via the white iPhone cable down here. So if I push the uh, talk button, iPod search, play album Fleetwood Mac. But now here's the thing that I don't like about this cabin tech is if you go back to the navigation system, you can see it shows traffic information on here and that's really useful. But if I were to program a route that went through that traffic, it would have no problem just sending me into the worst traffic possible. Now we also have the ELS audio system in this car. Of course, space treble, the usual stuff. And Acura puts this nice little pattern that shows the speakers around the car and lets you tune the fader, the balance, even the center channel and the subwoofer. There's 10 speakers. It's a really good sound. Acura tries to make the RDX look pretty sporty. For example, we have this red engine start button here. We also have these sport paddles here for manually shifting the six-speed automatic. It doesn't shift very fast, so you're not gonna be really powering down through the corners and downshifting really fast because once you try to hit one of these paddles with the downshifter, you have to wait a little bit for that shift to actually occur. Under the hood, we have a very different engine than you used to find in the RDX. There used to be a 2.3 liter four cylinder with a turbocharger. Now we have a 3.5 liter V6. The reason they went to this bigger engine is because the older one really wasn't a good application for the car. It never got really good fuel economy. Even though this is a bigger engine than the old four cylinder, it actually gets decent fuel economy. The EPA ratings are 19 miles per gallon city. 27 miles per gallon highway. This V6 makes 273 horsepower and power comes on pretty evenly too. There isn't much remarkable about the way the RDX drives. It's, it's pretty easy to drive, in fact. It works a lot like you'd expect of a premium SUV. You can jump in and just go without really fuss or worry. The ride quality could be a little smoother, actually. In decent roads, it feels okay, you don't really notice much. But then when you're on, when you get into some little slight rough stuff, some imperfections in the road, you really you know, you start to feel it a little more than I would expect in a premium level vehicle. When I get into the turns with this car, it's actually fairly stable. The suspension is, is really built, and you know maybe that's one of the trade-offs with getting, feeling some more of the, the rough pavement. It's not a super fantastic handler though, because the all-wheel drive system it has is just Acura's really standard all-wheel drive. It's not their super handling all-wheel drive system. And the suspension is also, it's just a fixed suspension. It's not a dynamic suspension like they have in the MDX. And the RDX is just not that vehicle. You'll see a base price for the 2013 Acura RDX of about $35,000. But now that's not the car you want. Acura puts all their technology in a trim package, so that's the Acura RDX with tech. 
That goes for about $39,000, but it brings in the navigation system, Bluetooth phone system, the stereo, that ELS stereo system. You'll want all that. And then you can also bump up to all-wheel drive for about $40,000 total. Now, that's hit or miss. I mean, if you take the car out into the snow and stuff like that, you might want the all-wheel drive. But if it's going to be kind of a suburban runabout, just get the front-wheel drive and you'll get better gas mileage.